Well, bless God, everybody. Bless God, everybody. Come on, clap your hands if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Come on, let's get excited about the word of God on tonight. I am so excited to be with you on tonight. Amen. Amen. As we continue our study, our discussion uh, here in the book of Revelation, certainly we have been blessed. Uh, the past several weeks, this being part 10 of our study, uh, we had four parts to the introduction. So in all actuality, this is part number 14, uh, amen, that we have been, this is the 14th week, the 14th week, write that down. This is the 14th week that we have been engaged in study, engaged in discussion uh, surrounding this book, uh, the last book in your Bible, which is the book of Revelation. Amen. And so we want to, uh, we want everyone to be excited about uh, what the Lord is doing in this season. We want everyone to be excited about this study. Amen. We, we pray that uh, everyone, praise God, has been truly blessed by our study. Amen. Praise God. As we can see uh, the timeline there on uh, Facebook, those who are on Facebook, thank you so much for being in the house on that platform. Those on the prayer line, thank you as well. Those of you who are not on Facebook uh, and have the capability of doing so, uh, I would strongly suggest that you, that you log on to uh, Facebook as well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. So we're going to pray uh, and then we're going to dive into our lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for all that you are in our lives. We thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, we invoke thy presence now. We need you now, God. We need the leadership, the guidance, the direction of thine Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we're ready. Hey, we talked to God, so that's it. That's enough. Tell your neighbor, that's all we need to do. We, we have talked to the Lord in prayer. So we want to begin, uh, brothers and sisters, tonight, uh, this being point number 10 of our study. Good evening to you, Sister Diane A. Williams. Good evening to you. Amen. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Now, Chapter, I want you to open your books, your Bibles to um, open your Bibles to Revelation, of course. And um, I think from this moment moving forward, we're going to just about pretty much kind of flow, just kind of follow. We're not going to read every verse. This is not a verse by verse study. Of course, we know. All right. This is not a verse by verse study. Now, uh, just as a quick recap. We already know uh, the book is there on your screen. The book of Revelation is on your screen. It deals with the rapture and the second coming of Jesus the Christ. The rapture will take place first. All right? The rapture is when Jesus returns for his church. Okay? Then the great uh, well, the, the, the seven-year tribulation period will begin, okay? Seven years of tribulation, all right? Tribulation is another word for trouble. Good God. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some trouble going on. Hello. Amen. And uh, uh, you ever heard Grandmama say, I thank the Lord? When, when Grandmama stand up and give a testimony, she said, I thank the Lord for bringing me through trials and tribulation, <laughs> amen. So, so whenever we see that word tribulation, we know that that, amen, that, that's a key word. The, the tribulation, seven year tribulation period, three and a half years, and then the second three and a half will be the great tribulation. And then the second coming of Christ will take place. And that is when Christ will return with his church. Are you with me? with his church. Okay, so on last Wednesday, uh, we, we know we've been talking last couple of Wednesdays about Babylon. We've been talking about the great whore, W-H-O-R-E. 
we've been talking about um, uh, religion, okay? We've been talking about false doctrine, okay? Now, um, when, we, when we talk about Babylon, the literal city of Babylon is, is, is symbolic of um, the symbolic, is, it is symbolic of the Babylonian spirit. Are you with me? As we talk about this, the Babylonian spirit, which was uh, a spirit, which was a spirit that opposed the work of God or went against the work of God. Is that Cindy Allen, my, my friend? Hey, Cindy, my friend, if that's the same one, I can't really see. Amen. God bless you, my former co-worker. God bless you. Amen. God bless if that's the same the person I think it is. Amen. Love you in the Lord. All right. Now, um, the Babylonian spirit, I want you to get that, is a spirit that opposed the work of God from the very beginning. Mean that it went against the work of God. Are y'all with me? Amen. Amen. And so that spirit had to be destroyed. Make a note that anything and anybody that goes against God is going to be destroyed. Ultimately, it may not be today, may not be tomorrow, but it will ultimately be destroyed. Amen. Only what we do for Christ. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm, I'm trying to keep my cool because it's kind of early in the lesson. <laughs> amen. I'm trying, amen, somebody. I'm trying to, y'all know it don't take much for me. Amen. So let, let's look at chapter 19 very quickly. Let, 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 let's start there. After these things, what things? So whenever you see, see that in scripture, you need to ask yourself, what things? Where well, here is it's pertaining to uh, specifically everything that took place in chapter 18. Keep in mind, brothers and sisters, that the Bible was not written in chronological order. However, I told you all this before, much of what we see contained therein happened in that sequence. You just got to keep that in mind as you study scripture. All right? So the Bible said here, after and after these things, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Y'all with me? This is John speaking. John the revelator. John, that beloved disciple of Jesus Christ. That's the same fellow, you know, who had been exiled on the Isle of Patmos. All right? And the reason is because of his religious belief, of his religious conviction. I got a question for you. Are you willing to be exiled for your religious beliefs? Mm -hmm. I can't hear nobody now. Quiet in the house. Are you willing to be exiled for the way you believe? Come on. Amen. Amen, amen. I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. So what John heard was praise. Write that down. What John heard was praise. Okay. Which, by the way, is the exact opposite of what's happening on earth right now. Ain't, 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 enough, ain't too much praise going on. No, no, no. I don't get what you say. It's not too much praise going on, baby. Not too much praise going on uh, right now. Amen. There's so many people that are caught up in everything else but praising God. But John said, I heard a great voice, Brother Michael Sanford, my friend, my buddy. Uh, John said, I heard a great voice of much people in heaven. Look what the voice said. Hallelujah. This voice was saying, hallelujah, salvation and glory honor and power unto the Lord our God. Now there was a song. Somebody had sense enough to write a song about it. Hallelujah. Y'all remember that one? Salvation and glory. 
honor and power unto the Lord our God. Come on. Hallelujah. Salvation and glory. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. The Lord our God is mighty. I'm mixing up all the words. The Lord our God is omnipotent. The Lord our God is wonderful. Come on. Woo, Lord have mercy. Oh, my God. I wish I had a choir in my heart. Mm, Jesus. Man, the right choir can rock that song. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. So, 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 so that's what John hears. See, see, when we get to heaven, man, ain't nothing going to be going on but praise. It's going to be a praise party all day. Y'all with me? Ain't nobody going to be talking. We're looking at their watches. You know, <laughs> we've been in church too long. Come on, somebody. Amen. So the salvation that's being spoken of here Make note, this salvation belongs to the Lord. It is God's salvation. It belongs to him. Verse two, for true and righteous are his judgments. For true and righteous are his judgment. Judgments. For he has judged the great whore. We talked about the great whore the last two Wednesdays. I don't think we need to talk a whole lot about the great whore tonight because we identified who this great whore is, what this great whore represents, all right? And in short, I want to say that this great whore uh, uh, pertains to every false way of salvation. Every false way. You know, we talked about this, this woman, the woman that was riding on the beast, and all, you know, we talked about all that, y'all. <laughs> amen, amen. And, uh, and, and so uh, uh, she was representative of every, every manner of false doctrine, every manner of false religion, every manner of false teaching uh, for, for the way of salvation. Amen. So the Lord, and, and I don't care how beautiful it is, on the outside, you know, I don't care how 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 beautiful, how how good uh, uh, this false stuff is dressed up. The Lord knows what it really is, and the Lord refers to it as the great whore. Come on, Amen. Because that's what a whore does. A whore is not faithful to one. A whore is not loyal to one. They're all over the place. All right, look at the sea portion, which did corrupt the earth with, with her fornication. So it's talking about all the religions, all the religions of the world. This world that we live in is full of various religions. Christianity is just one of them. Y'all hear me? Amen. Do your research. Christianity is just one of them. There are so many out there, and this refers to all of the religions of the world, um, uh, but it also refers to the fact that, uh, that if anything other than Jesus and him crucified is being preached, if anything is being preached other than that, come on here, amen, it, it, it means that it's false. It, it, is, it is spiritual fornication. Y'all with me? Write that down. It is spiritual. It is projecting a type of spiritual fornication. T write it down, everybody. Type it in. And look at the end of this, the deep portion of the verse, and has avenged the blood of his servants at our hand. Okay. Um, verse three. And again, they said, hallelujah. All right. So, so 
So this is the praise of God, the praise, you know, we, we know, we know hallelujah to be the highest of all praises. When you say hallelujah, you're saying something. You with me? Don't miss me right here. Don't miss me. Don't miss me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, when you say hallelujah, you saying something. Do you know what you're saying? <laughs> Amen. That we ought to do it. Uh, next time we in church, somebody sitting next to us, uh, you know, Rev is up preaching or, uh, you know, someone is singing a song or, or something or, or, or saying, doing something that's being done that will cause your neighbor to say hallelujah. Next time they do that, you ought to lean over real easy and say, baby, do you know what you're saying? Come on. Hey, you say, you say hallelujah, man. You saying something. Amen. All right. And again, they said hallelujah. So this is God's praise. This is God's praise song. Amen. And and uh and and this praise uh is coming because uh, uh Babylon has been destroyed. Every evil spirit, we're getting ready to talk about that in a minute. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, and her smoke rolls up forever and ever. So this judgment that's being rendered is an eternal judgment. Deacon Richard, good to see you, man. Good to see you, sir. Amen. FT Missionary Baptist Church is in the house. Amen. This judgment. Waiting on, I wonder if uh, Lady Barbara London, she normally joins us, Deacon Richard, on this night. Haven't seen her name pop up yet. Praise the Lord. All right. So this judgment that's being rendered, y'all, is an eternal judgment. Write that down. All right. That's why I say her smoke rolls up forever and ever. Look at verse four. And the four and 20 elders, we're going to talk about this, and the four beasts, uh, four beasts, the living ones, uh, they fell down and worshiped God who sat on the throne. So the 24 elders that are, that are mentioned here, they represent all of the redeemed, all of the redeemed uh, of all ages. Redeemed, 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 redeemed. Oh, I, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Mm. Redeem, 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 redeem. Oh, I, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. So the 24 elders represent all of the redeemed of all ages, okay? They are, they are in fact, 24 men, okay? Um, uh, the four living ones represent the creation of God, okay? And look, they say, amen, hallelujah. So now, what this hallelujah signals, I wanna reiterate, say it a different way so you can really get it. It is signaling, the reason why this, 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 this praise party is being lifted in heaven is because uh, it is signaling the end of all evilness and the beginning of all righteousness. Are y'all with me? It is signaling, let me say it again. It is sig signaling the end of all evilness and the beginning of all righteousness. Okay, look at verse five. And a voice came out of the throne, okay, saying, praise our God, all you, his servants, and you who fear him, both small and great. So every true believer is going to be, is going to be praising God on a continual basis. There's going to be no feel-good stuff, you know. Amen. There's going to be no feel-good stuff. You know how we do sometimes. 
Hey, we pray, we, we, we lift the praise when we feel like it and all that. No, no, ain't gonna be no feel good stuff. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's going to be genuine. It's going to be pure, sincere praise offered unto God. Okay. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. Um, so this, this great multitude is, you know, it's a lot of people. Uh, it's consistent of every single believer, every single believer who has lived uh, all the way from the days of Cain and Abel um, up unto the last person who be who who accepted salvation during the great tribulation because keep in mind keep in mind let me let me give it to you again keep in mind now the misconception i always have to say this every wednesday every wednesday the holy spirit lead me to say this i got to i came to set the record straight y'all with me i came to set the record straight the misconception has been and perhaps still is to some degree, that when Jesus returned for his church, the dead in Christ going to rise. We that are still here in Christ going to be caught up and all of us going to heaven. Okay. Now that, now that part is true. But the part that's not true is those who have not accepted Christ at that time are going to go immediately and directly to hell. And then that's it. End of story, close up the book. That's the misconception. But that's not Bible. Tell your neighbor. Tell your neighbor that if, it's, if it ain't in the Bible, that means it's not Bible. Come on. What you see on your screen is Bible, Facebook. What you see on your screen is Bible. There's going to be a seven years of the tribulation. During that time, individuals will have an opportunity to come to God. But here's the thing, before you get all happy, amen. <laughs> I read your mind and said, I ain't going, I ain't going to Christ now, I can wait. Here's the thing, before, be, 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 before, before you get all happy, and you say, I ain't got to get, yeah, you need to get in a hurry. You know why? Because during that period, that we talked about it for the past 14 weeks. During that period, there's going to be so much going on, you're going to wish you had left here. Lord, help me tonight. Mm, Jesus. Jesus. All right. Bless his name. Look at the B portion of verse six. And as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thunderings. So that's how, that's how the praise sounds. That's how the praise is being lifted. That's how the praise is being expressed. Okay. I mean, there's a whole lot of noise. You with me? You know, my church know I tell them all the time. I said it um, today uh, at 12 noon in our teaching, uh, Simply the Word platform, our prayer ministry. I, I said it then. I said, listen. I make a lot of noise in church. I do. I, I make a lot of noise and you just got to get used to me. Don't, don't sit by me if you don't. <laughs> Amen. I, I make, because I think about it now, when I go to the ball game, I make noise. I'm pausing on purpose. And as the voice of many waters and as the voice of mighty thunderings saying hallelujah for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. The Lord, y'all, I'm telling you at this time, I want you to get it. Because remember now, the second coming is, is getting ready to, we, we're close now. We're close in the setting of the text. We're right on it. We're right on it. And you got to understand, Sister Faye Forbes, there in Turks and Caicos, you got to understand, uh, woman of God, you got to understand uh, also Sister Tanisha Ramsey Lane, God bless you, kingdom blessings to you as well, in Jesus' name. Uh, you got to understand, y'all, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ um, is, 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 is coming to get his church. That's the rapture. 
Okay, that's the rapture. When he comes to get his church, that's not the second coming. When he comes to get his church, that's the rapture. Okay? And when he comes back with his church, that's the second coming. It's on your screen. All right? But we need to understand that <clears throat> upon the second coming of Christ, Jesus Christ is coming to take total dominion over everything and everybody and he's shut down every work of evil, every form of evilness be, will be completely destroyed. We talk about the, uh, the great whore. We talked about Babylon being destroyed, the city. All of that will be destroyed. But God is so full of grace that he's, oh my God, he did not even have to allow individuals all of these opportunities to come to him, but he's so full of grace. He's telling us in his word what he's going to do. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Amen. So this hallelujah that's being lifted, y'all, is pertaining specifically to the Lord reigning as king. Jesus Christ is going to reign as king. And he's going to do it forever. Y'all with me? And he's coming to set up a new earth. Oh, my God. That's going to be a new earth. A new earth. We're going to talk about it. Just keep coming to church. Satan, Satan is not going to reign forever. Satan is not going to reign. Come on. He's going to be shut down. Hallelujah. It's going to happen that way because the Lord is all powerful. Look at verse seven, let us be glad and rejoice. So all of those, all of the redeemed, all of the redeemed are, are going to be joined uh, uh, in a sense in holy matrimony to the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ who has saved him, amen. All of those who, all of the redeemed, um, in particular those who have accepted God or come to God during the tribulation period, during the great tribulation period, will be joined in holy matrimony. We talk about it all the time, uh, Jesus Christ being the bridegroom, the church being the bride of Christ. All right? So, so he's coming back, all right? And the and, and, uh, Bible said, and give honor to him. So what God... God, as I said a moment ago, God is so full of grace and truth and righteousness that he, um, he has made it possible for all of mankind to become redeemed. He has made it possible for all of mankind to become redeemed, to become a part of the redeemed, the called out, the saved, the holy one. Amen. And he did it by way of Jesus, his son, the sacrifice of his son, Jesus, uh, on the cross. Amen. If Jesus had not died, uh, we would not have this blessed opportunity, this awesome privilege to come to God. All right. For the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. Keep in mind, I'm reading from the King James Version. Okay, so this scene that we are um, putting on display, um, this scene, it, it, it's almost as if the book of Revelation is almost like a play. You know, you, I don't know if y'all have been to a play before and uh, they have different scenes, you know, Tyler Perry, you know, all this. <laughs> he has a different scene. I think he's kind of gotten away from all those plays now. He, he ain't got time to mess around that little bit of money. He's he making all that big money now, you know, them plays, lit money. Amen. So, um, but but it's almost like a play, a, a stage play, the book of Revelation, and there are various scenes. And when one scene ends, the curtain is pulled, and then good God. Mm -hmm. And then, then 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 everyone need to get ready for the next scene. And when the curtain is opened again, you know that the next scene is getting ready to take place. So this scene that we're discussing is going to take place in heaven immediately before the second coming. Y'all with me? Immediately before the second coming. 
this 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 wife um, that that is referenced. You see the word wife, and his wife has made herself ready. That is the redeemed. That is the church of all ages. Okay, of all ages. That's why we refer to the church as her. See, you know the church is a woman, right? Amen. Come on. The church is a woman. We refer to the church as her because the church is the bride of Christ. You with me? Amen. Christ being the, the bridegroom. Amen. The husband. Come on. Y'all with me? Stay with me now. And all of the writing you date, go back to Apostle Paul, church at Corinth, and all of the writings that he, all of that is coming into play. Y'all with me? Amen. Hey, come on, somebody. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Hey, hey, amen. Amen. So, so we got, amen. It's some good stuff. Look at verse eight. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. All right. Talking about the wife. All right. Talking about the church. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Y'all see it? The fine linen is, is, is actually, write this down. It's going to be good to write down. The fine linen reference here in verse eight, the A portion is symbolic of righteousness. Which by the way, once again, was afforded to unto us by what Jesus did at the cross. Okay. <laughs> Every, that's what, you gotta go back to the cross to get it. I'm serious. You, you, gotta, you gotta go back there. Tell your neighbor, go back to the cross. At the cross, at the cross, is where I first saw the light and the burden, Lord Jesus, of my heart, it rolled away. Hmm. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. Verse nine, and he said unto me, write, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the lamb. Good God. Ah. So, so the one speaking to John says this. John says, and he said unto me. You with me? Amen. So John is letting us know, brothers and sisters, what is spoken unto him. The word lamb is used here. So it, it signifies that all of this, once again, is made possible by what Jesus did at the cross. Jesus offered himself as the ultimate sacrifice on the altar. And he did it for all of us. Isn't that amazing? One man died. So all of us might be able to live. Ah! Now, if you didn't feel something right through there, I'm, I'm, you better check your salvation, baby. <laughs> you better. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't not trying to judge you. <laughs> Amen. But I'm just saying, you need to check yourself right through here. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. So, uh, B portion, he said unto me, these are the true sayings of God. Solidifying, validating the fact that all of this is coming directly from God himself. It's made possible uh, by the finished work of Jesus Christ. The finished work. The work of Jesus was finished. You with me? When he said it is finished on the cross, it's, it, was, it was truly finished. Amen. Now, now he did, you know, he had some other things to do, but I'm, I'm saying the work of salvation was finished at Calvary. Y'all with me? And I fell at his feet, verse 10, to worship him. This is what John did. And he said unto me, see you do it not. See you do it not. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren. All right. So this is 
a man speaking to John. Okay. But this man is appearing to John in a glorified form. So John thinks it is Jesus at this point. All right. Okay. So it, it tells us what 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 all the all of the saints are going to look like in the coming resurrection period. Okay. Look at look at what he says. And of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Okay. That means that they testified to the fact that Jesus died. And his, he had a ministry. The men, also the ministry uh, you can attach to that is uh, also the ministry of the Holy Spirit is attached to the testimony of Christ. Because there is a triune God. You know, the God we serve is a triune God, right? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. All they, all three go together. We don't want to start with that. We'll, we'll go off. We'll take flight somewhere else. We'll leave that alone. So amen. So the Bible says, worship God for the for the testimony right of jesus is the spirit of prophecy now so he says worship god so what he specifies worshiping god as in opposed as opposed to worshiping anything or anybody else don't worship people don't worship the angels don't worship um uh don't worship the virgin mary you know um there are some things and some statements i could make right through there but i'm gonna leave that alone Amen. I'm going to leave that alone for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This testimony represents the atoning work of Christ. Are y'all with me? All right. Every prophetic word spoken in the Old Testament points us in some way to Jesus. We talk about it all the time. Simply the word church, our prayer ministry, we talk about it all the time. Every prophetic word, everything that's spoken, everything that's done and said in the Old Testament writing um, points us in some way or another to Jesus and what he did at Calvary. Verse 11 is, I guess, as I said a moment ago, uh, this book of Revelation is filled with, with scenes um it's it's filled with uh scenes as if it's a stage play you know y'all y'all with me as as if it's a stage play and so the curtain is drawn now you got to see this thing mm -hmm. do your hand like that you gotta bring the curtain you gotta close the curtain come on y'all help me close the curtain ha! help me close it Close that curtain. Tell your neighbor, close the curtain, baby. Close the curtain. Close the curtain. Now, let's open it again. You ready? All right. We're opening the curtain. Y'all, do your hand like this now. Don't let me do it by myself. Do it like that. Open the curtain. All right. Let's go to verse 11 because verse 11 opens another curtain. Here we go. And I saw heaven open. Good God. There it is. There it is. John says, saw it. Theologians declare this right here, verse 11, is the greatest moment in human history. This right here the greatest, type it in. Y'all ain't working on Facebook too well tonight. Come on, type it in. This is the greatest, this is the, gr good God. This is the greatest moment without a shadow of a doubt in human biblical history, period. John say, I saw heaven open. You know, John is saying something right here. And behold, a white horse, okay? And he who sat upon it, uh, upon him, was called faithful and true. Mm -hmm. He who sat upon him was called faithful 
and true. Y'all with me? And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. This is the second coming. I know y'all been waiting on it. This is it. Jesus is, Jesus is making his arrival. Lord have mercy. Hmm? Are you with me tonight? Are you excited about this? This is it, man. Y'all to give you chills when you know just <laughs> I'm serious, man. Do y'all see this? John said, I saw the heaven open. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. See, all that stuff we just talked about was setting the stage for this grand celebration that we're looking at right now in the text. I want you to go well, walk with me now. How much time we got? Walk with me, Jesus. Oh, Lord have mercy. Walk with me. Ha! Now look at it now. Look at it. Look at verse 12. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Now I want you to make a note that represents judgment. The fact that his eyes are as a flame of fire, that represents judgment. Write that down. That represents judgment. His eyes, the, high, the eyes of Christ. Amen. And on his head were many crowns. And theologians declare that the reason why on his head were many crowns was because he's not coming back as the Lord of just one area or one space or, or one piece. He's coming back as the Lord uh, of all people of all space and time, you with me? So that means uh, that the enemy, because you gotta think about it now, I want you to think about how things are now. The enemy has free course to roam around right now. That's why your money is funny sometimes, right? That's why you have to go back forth to the doctor. You with me? Because the devil is loose. Sickness is not of God. Do y'all hear me? Right? That's why you got to go down and, 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 and see about your grandbaby and got some trouble down there. He, he down there and they holding him in the detention center. Now, if that applies to anybody, I don't know your business. I'm just talking. You know, church folk get mad with you quick, boy. Now, he talking about my business. He, who told him anything about my grandbaby? I don't know nothing about your grandbaby. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. But that's, that's reality. That's why there's so much trouble. Because the enemy is loose and the Lord is allowing him to have free course and free reign uh, uh, down here on the, on the earth and in the world system. But when Jesus come, good God, he's going to shut it all down. You with me? So that's why on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew, but he himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. My God, my God. No man knew it but he himself. It didn't mean that, that his name, see, good God, y'all got to get this. The, the, the name of Jesus is, is really, uh, it's really unreachable by man. It, it, it really is because, because you cannot completely uh, Good God Almighty, you cannot completely describe him. You, you just, man, you can't do it. You can do it in justice, but you cannot fully and completely. The name will still be somewhat unreachable to man. The depth of Christ. He's so deep. Lord have mercy. You can never reach the bottom. He's so deep, you can never reach the bottom. He's so high, you can never reach the top. Y'all with me? He's so wide, you go to the left, you'll never get to the end. Thirteen, he was clothed with a vesture 
dipped in blood. Very interesting that it says dipped in blood. It's speaking of the cross. It's speaking of uh, the very place where he shed his blood, uh, which in essence gives him, gives Jesus the right to judge the world. Jesus going to have a right. Jesus earned the right. He has the authority. He earned it because he gave his life for the church. So he has a right to judge us. Are you with me? And his name is called the word of God. Lord have mercy. That's the revealed name of Christ. You know, that's the revealed name of Christ. Write that down. The revealed name of Christ is the word of God. Amen. Because he revealed God in his grace and power. Jesus, by Jesus coming into the world, you know, and, 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 and ministering and preaching and, 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 you know, by him, by virtue of fact that he came into the world and, and offered himself as a ransom for many, went to Calvary and died. Amen. By doing so, he revealed the grace and the power of Almighty God. And it brings us to the point as believers where we can say that we know the Lord. Amen. That we can, we can, you ought to be able to say that tonight, that you know him. Do you know him? Amen. Amen. And, 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 and you, ought to, you ought to also uh, 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 be, be able to say you need it. I need the Lord. I need him to guide me. Every day, every day, Lord, as I travel all along this so narrow way, hey, hey, hey. Woo, Lord, help me, Jesus, glory. All right, now, look at 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. These armies are the saints of God. Let me show it to you again, just in case you fell asleep. Here it is. These armies are the saints of God. Jesus, at the second coming, he's returning with his church. We coming back. Armies which were in heaven. Remember, we went to heaven at the rapture. You remember? Y'all with me? Come on. Amen. And um, and and uh, the Bible says here that the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. So these armies are us. These armies are the saints of God. All the saints uh, that have ever lived. Amen, which means that we will be with him at the second coming. Now I'm in the Bible. I'm, I'm in, you, you can't, I'm in the Bible. Amen. Tell your neighbor he in the Bible. What else you want him to do? <laughs> he in the Bible. Amen. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Man, we're going to be clean, y'all. <laughs> I wonder where you be in that number. Amen. I, I wonder. I wonder where you be in that number. Praise his holy name. All right. We, we got time. I thought we were getting ready. Okay, 7.05. We'll go about five more minutes. Um, we'll go about, that's right. That's right, Lady London. I almost said that, too. I almost said that. That's the God truth. It was on the tip. I say that all the time. Lady Barbara said, she typed it in. Reverend Hawkins would always say that. Do you know him? Y'all know Reverend, Reverend Anderson Hawkins, the late great Pastor Anderson Hawkins Sr. He would say that all of the time. Do you know him? When he get ready to close that sermon out, amen. He would look over, primarily he'd look over at them deacons, you know. Do you know him, boys? <laughs> 
<laughs> do you know? Amen. I remember that. I do. Thank you, Lady Barbara. Thank you so much. Amen. Praise God. That's the kind of interaction we need. We're in church. We're enjoying this lesson. And, um, and we're growing in the word of God. 15. Now we're gonna we're gonna try this really. Um, uh, the, the, the curtain is still open, you know. We're talking about these different stages of the play. The curtain is still open, uh, but uh, we're getting ready to talk about something a little bit different. And out of his mouth goes a sharp sword. You see that? A sharp sword. Now, why is this worded this way? A sharp sword. Remember what the Bible says about the word of God? The Bible refers to the word of God, the word of God as sharp. It is so sharp that it will cut us. Amen. I said this years ago and periodically I say it from time to time. Every time we sit under the teaching of the word of God, are we studying the word of God in some way, some capacity? Anytime we're exposed to God's word. By the time we close that Bible, all of us should be bleeding because we're cut. We've been cut. But the interesting thing about Jesus, Lord help me. The interesting thing about Jesus is Jesus will cut you with the word. Watch this. See, 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 Jesus is not like people. When a, when a person cuts you, they walk away. I wish I had. Come on, because they, 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 they're intending to do you harm, right? If your enemy cut you, he's not going to stick around and see if you're going to get better. Come on. He's going to cut you and walk away. Hello. Amen. But the interesting thing about Jesus is, watch this here. Jesus will cut us ah, and then he'll heal our wounds. Y'all missing me. Yeah. Now, he's the one who cut us with the word, but he'll heal our wounds. I wish I had somebody. Let's go on. Out of his mouth, out of his mouth goes his sharp sword. Okay. That with it, he should smite the nations. Okay. So um, let's talk about this phrase, smite the nation, smite, smite the nation, referring to all the nations uh, that, um, that would join the Antichrist in an effort to destroy Israel, okay? Israel is the church, you with me? We are the church, we are Israel, okay? So, so all the nations that would join forces with the Antichrist in an effort to destroy Israel. So it is known as the Battle of Armageddon. That's what it's known as, the Battle the battle of Armageddon, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, okay? With a rod of iron. Um, I'm, I'm saying it two or three times. I want you to, I want to soak in and you visualize. Uh, he will rule them with a rod of iron. So we're referring to the fact that, uh, uh, that, that he will not allow uh, or, or uh, tolerate um, anything that goes against the work of God. That's what it means, a, um, a rod of iron, you know, and, and, and uh, iron is, is, is strong, it's sturdy, it's stationary, you know, you can't break it. You can't break no iron, man. You know, iron not like wood or, or plastic, you know, some plastic or something. I mean, it's iron. Y'all, y'all with me? That's why the Bible said iron sharpen iron. You know, that's something, you know, that's how all stuff go together. I'm so serious with you. Y'all with me? Iron. He will rule them with a rod of iron. And he treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Amen. Let me, I believe. It will be good to stick a pin here. What y'all think about that? 
Amen. As if I can hear you. All right. What you what you think about that? Let's stick a pin there. And next Wednesday, be the will of God. Be the will of God. We will begin pick up where we left off, not necessarily walking verse by verse, not necessarily, maybe so, but not necessarily. You know, most of our study of this book has not been verse by verse. Tonight has been, for the most part, tonight has been, for the most part, verse by verse. And even last Wednesday, I can recall um, a good bit of that lesson was verse by verse. But, um, you know, we're just letting the Lord lead us and, and guide us in, in the way that we should study it. And, uh, and, and we, you know, this book has 22 chapters, I believe. Yeah. So, um. I don't know how God's going to do it. I don't know. Good to see you, Leon Washington, man. Good to see you, boy. Amen. All right, my homeboy, Mac Manus, in the house. Bless you, man. Want to see you soon, brother. Come see me, man. Come see me, man. All right. Okay. Um, I talked to your brother, uh, uh, Reverend Danny. Reverend Danny called me uh, yesterday or uh, Monday. Monday. Call me Monday, man. Yeah, so I want to let you know that as well. All right, so um, let us let us in here, and we want to don't don't walk out to church now. We got to lift our offering and all that. Uh, we want to compel men to come to Christ. You know, if you're unsaved and you're in search of a church, we'll be glad to have you um, at the Hickory Grove Missionary Baptist Church or the McEwen Baptist Church. Um, amen. Be glad to have you. Praise God. Uh, we have some other churches here represented tonight as well. I know FT is represented. Amen. And um, and and uh, and some others. Amen. Uh, praise God. Um, uh, you go to the church of your choice. Amen. You know, I, I'm just not in the... Now, all of us want to... Uh, everybody, every pastor, they, they'll be lying if they say they don't want a large membership. Everybody wants a large membership, you know, really. Uh, but but I, I'm just in the... I'm in the business of populating heaven. I want to I want to populate heaven, amen, primarily uh, more so than uh, populating a, a, ch a particular church, amen. Of course, I'd love to have you. Praise God, love to be your pastor. That's the way the Lord is leading you. All right, now, uh, ways to give, Hickory Grove MBC. That's where we are tonight. Cash app, Hickory Grove MBC. So we're pushing that cash app tonight. Hickory Grove, MBC. If you do not have a cash app, you can mail that in. Check money order, cash your check. PO Box 1721, Jackson, Louisiana. Jackson, LA, 70748. That is PO Box 1721, Jackson, LA, 70748. All right. We trust that you are giving or have given or will give according to the Bible say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shake it together and run it over. Shall the Lord cause men to give unto you. We want to put up, I want to show you here our radio broadcast every Sunday, 1030 till 11. All right. If you're out of town, you can catch it uh, by the way of internet, heaven1460.com. If you're out of town. Uh, if you're in town, WXOK1460 on the AM or 95.7 on the FM, they have added an FM station, 95.7, which may or may not be clearer for you, 95.7. So that's every Sunday. Been on the radio now, been on the radio now uh, just under three years. We thank God for it. Amen. The Lord lay on your heart to sow a special seed into the radio ministry. Go ahead and do it. Amen. Amen. Obey the voice of the Lord. Okay. Now we also want to um, uh, put this before you tonight, our yearly theme, what the Lord has spoken unto us, 2022 being the year of restoration. It's there on your screen. The Lord said he's going to rebuild reconstruct, reinstate, and reestablish. The Lord says it's going to rebuild, reconstruct, reinstate, and reestablish. All of that in his effort to restore us. All right? 
all of that in his effort to restore us. Okay? So we want to put that, take a little snap of that with your phone. If you don't go ahead and snap it real quick before we take it down. Take a picture of that so you can have that with you. Okay. And you know, Joel 2, um, we've been we've been preaching from that this entire month. Joel chapter 2, verse 25, 26, 27. Um, when the Lord said, I'll restore unto you everything that the locusts have eaten. Amen. The canker worm, the palmer worm, you know? and and uh, and we've been dealing with that that series entitled "He Did It Another Way." He did it another way. All right. So, people of God, we want to uh, we want to show you this. This is our prayer ministry. I want to share this with you. We want to try to get everybody on board with our prayer ministry Tuesday and Friday morning, eight fifteen on the prayer line and on Facebook. Simply the Word Church. Also, Wednesdays, 12 high noon, we were there today, live on Facebook, um, also live on the prayer line. We do have a YouTube channel. Subscribe to it. It is simply the word church. Search for it on YouTube. It's free. Subscribe to it. All right. Simply the word church. All right. I believe that's it. It's time for us to go. It is 7.15. We're right on the money. Time to go. God bless all of you. I pray that that you have been blessed tonight, um, whether you were on the prayer line or on Facebook or wherever you were or wherever you are. Let us continue to lift up those who are sick and uh, in their body, sick in their mind. Let's continue to lift up this nation, this world, and this country. Um, let us continue to pray for one another, those who are less fortunate than we are. Let us continue to Pray for our national leaders uh, that they will make the right choices concerning the people. Amen. Let's first of all pray for their salvation. Say that all the time. Amen. Uh, I think I recently said this. Uh, I don't know if Dr. Jojo Biden is saved or not, but I hope he is. Mm -hmm. Come on. Come on. And he don't know if I'm saved. <laughs> Amen. Uh, but I, but I, I would hope he is. I would hope he is as president. I hope Kamala is saved. I don't know if she's saved or not, but I hope she is. Come on. Amen, somebody. I don't know. I don't know if Dr. Fauci knows Jesus. Lord, help me. I don't know that, but I pray he does. Y'all go get those vaccinations. Go with the boosters and uh, take care of yourself. Stay healthy. Stay well and do what's right, amen, so that we can try to get ahead of this thing, get back to some degree of normalcy, amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The numbers are going through the roof. We must do our part. Isn't that right? God bless you. God bless you. God keep you. I um, want to say to the members of our church, let us not forget our Family Focus Fellowship. As we press on in the week, you know the day and you know the time. Amen. Be in the house so that we can share with you uh, briefly um, in fellowship. All right. Praise his name. All right. I believe that is all uh, tonight, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much, Facebook family. We love you in the Lord. Thank you, prayer line family. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit Rest, rule, and abide now and forever as we come down from this place, but never to leave our presence. It is in the name of Jesus that we that we pray. Amen. Send a shout out to Lady King, my wife. God bless you. Love you in the Lord. Love you. All right. She was in the house tonight. Amen. So we're leaving now, y'all. We'll see you in uh, a little while. See you. If you need me, call me, 225-202-8431. God bless you and God keep you.